Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you our carnivorous plant collection. Let's start with the plants we have created in our own lab, like this Drosera vinata and Venus flytraps. Venus flytraps is the most commonly known carnivorous plant, and as of 2014, only 33,000 plants remaining in the wild. Collecting wildfire traps is a felony. That's why it's essential to only buy plants from reputable sources. Tissue culture labs can clone thousands of plants each month, which help with these plants conservation. Sondius are some of the faster growing carnivorous plants in tissue culture. This tray of Drosera capillaris came from one tissue culture container out of the hundreds that we have. Because of our climate in East Tennessee, we haven't had much luck growing Cephalotus or Dalintonia californica outside. It is just too warm for these cool loving climate plants. Drosera capensis is one of the most commonly grown carnivorous plants. It produces so many seeds that some people consider these plants a weed. This next plant is called Stalidium dibio, or Frego trigger plant. It readily spreads from roots, so its container rapidly fills with the, its distinctive ground cover. It propagates so fast that we no longer keep this plant in tissue culture. That's it for the plants we have created in our own lab. We do have more carnivorous plants in tissue culture, but those are still in the propagation stages. The following plants will be used in future experiments, like this Saracenia leucophylla. Saracenia leucophylla is one of the tallest, if not the tallest, North American pitcher plants. It can grow over 3 foot tall. The genus Saracenia is native to North America. Its natural habitat starts in eastern Texas, is where to go the panhandle of Florida, moves north along with the Atlantic coast states to Newfoundland, Canada, and then west to go southern Canada to British Columbia. The plants inhabit any permanent moist sites, including swamps, lake edges, riverbanks, boggy pine forests, mer ferns, water springs, or any low laying areas. Although they cannot live in permanently flooded areas, Saracenians can survive well in the regions experiencing temporary flood and submersion. It is not surprising that they cannot tolerate long-term droughts. Nepenthes Miranda is probably one of the first carnivorous plants for a lot of people. It is one of the cheapest and widely available carnivorous plants. You can probably find one at your local nursery. This is one of my oldest survival plants. I had it for well over 10 years. For the Nepenthe genius in general, please buy plants and especially seeds only from reliable sources. These plants are in danger and many of the seeds sold online were illegally collected from the wild. Tissue culture is an excellent tool for the propagation and conservation of this genus. This is my TV aquarium I built many years ago for fish. Unfortunately, when I started college, I had to downsize my fish collection, so it's only being used for plants. The top tank has different plant species from Nepenthe seedlings to Mexican pinguicula and some sundews. Pinguicula means little greasy one in Latin, one of the best carnivorous plants to keep in a windowsill. It's the best catching fruit flies in the kitchen. This is a bog garden I made two years ago. It does need some work. The liner has a leak somewhere and is not retaining enough water as I wanted. 
I will wait until the plants go dormant to get them out and replace the liner with a new one. Some plants still have some decent looking pictures, but most plants do not look too good as they need more water. That's most of our carnivorous plant collection. I will make another video of the carnivorous plants we are growing in Tisha Portal when the new lab is finished. Until then, make sure to subscribe and check plantsoutechnology.com for more information.